Recorded live from Rayma Bible Church in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, you are watching Kenneth E. Hagen's Winter Bible Seminar 1999. Uh, uh, Miss Denise called, and we still need 15006 workers. Matter of fact, she said she'll take anybody she can get. The kids are winning. So uh, if you can help out, we'd be more than happy to let you go help them, all right? Amen. How about the name of Jesus? Are you glad for the name of Jesus tonight? Hallelujah. I said, are you glad for the name of Jesus tonight? <laughs> Brother Philip exhorted us last night about the name. Amen. I like it when it gets on that subject. Hallelujah. But I tell you, one of my favorite subjects to hear Brother Hagen minister on is the corporate anointing and how the name of Jesus, when we all come together and we agree on any one thing. Amen. Hallelujah. I tell you, there's a lot of power in this room tonight. Anything that you need from God is available for you here tonight, amen? And it's all in the name of Jesus. But when, when you and I and everyone else around here gather together and agree on one thing and join together and bind together in the Spirit, hallelujah, anything can happen if you just expect it and believe it, amen? Aren't you glad for the name of Jesus, amen? Give me your hand, let's agree together that all of our enemies will crumble at your feet. For whatever we bind on earth will be bound in heaven at the name of Jesus. Satan has to flee Cause we've got the power In the name of Jesus And we've got the power In the name of the Lord And though Satan rages We will not be Cause we've got the power in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. For many years now, Satan's tried to stop us. But the church of Jesus Christ, I thank God it's still alive. Like a mighty army. Seated. 
Oh, I thank God that we serve a God who is real. He is alive. Oh, we, he is not dead, but he is alive and reigning on the throne. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, in the Old Testament, the Old Testament, the people of God, God's people, they didn't have his power. They didn't have his power upon them. They didn't have his power in them. Only the prophets had the power of God. And even then, they only had the power upon. Amen? But thank God today, we not only have the power that comes upon us, but the power of God is living and reigning and abiding inside of us. Glory to God. It is real. And sometimes it is like fire shut up in our bones. Hallelujah. Thank God for the power. Jerusalem was a shaking. Pentecost had arrived. And up a room party. They were drunk on the new wine. Peter stood among them. He knew there was no doubt uh, This Holy Ghost fire will make you dance and shout From his brother's belly, born to prophesy The prophet Jeremiah will lift his voice and cry Be quiet, folks demanded, shut up, we must alone But how can you be quiet when there's fire out of your boat? This is like fire A dead man resurrected and he ran back to his home When telling folks the story you could hear him say Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. Thank God for the fire. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen, 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 amen. Thank God for the Holy Ghost fire. Praise God. Hallelujah. Sing a little bit more. Some people get offended because I leap and shout. They say too much emotion, too much moving about. Don't tell me to be silent, nor sit down in my pew. Cause if you felt what I felt, I know. You'd be shouting. It's just like fire. And it shut up in my bones. Praise God for Holy Ghost fire. Shut up in my bones. 
Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Father, we're so grateful and thankful for all of your blessings. We could never praise you enough. We could never thank you enough. We thank you again tonight for the privilege that we have to come together in the name of Jesus, together around that name that's above every name, the name of our Lord and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you again tonight for the precious, holy, written word, for the privilege that we have to feed upon the word of God, to be doers of the word, not just hearers only, and to become recipients of all that the word provides and promises. Thank you again this night for the blessed Holy Spirit whom thou have sent to indwell us, to be our teacher, to be our guide. We trust him tonight to live big in us, think through our minds, speak through our lips, unveil the word of God unto our spirits. We'll give all praise, all honor, and all glory for everything that's wrought among us, for we pray and ask it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that name that's above every name, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise God. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Remember, of course, the day services. Some time ago, I was praying in the Spirit. In fact, in one of our fall Holy Ghost meetings, I was praying in the Spirit. I... Uh, that means with other tongues, in other tongues. And uh, I really don't like the expression, but I haven't been able to find a better expression. I call it getting lost in the spirit. Now, that just simply means that you get over in the spirit realm and natural, well, things just don't register. In fact, you think you've been praying about 10 to 15 minutes, and you open your eyes, you've been praying an hour and a half. Amen. When you get in the spirit, time goes by in a hurry because it is this thing as time in the spirit realm. And so I saw myself in the spirit. I saw myself three or four months ago standing here in the pulpit, and I saw myself teaching on the subject of prayer, and I heard myself say, Let's study and see what Jesus said about prayer, the words of Jesus. So that's what we're doing. Amen. I'm, I'm sorry I didn't get anything for the night service. I just saw the day service. But, uh, but as we uh, pray and seek the Lord, amen, he witnesses to us. See, he doesn't always lead that way. Once in a while he might. That's not the ordinary way that he leads, that the Holy Ghost leads and guides. Ordinarily, it's by an inward witness. Amen. Praise God. And so I couldn't get away. I did my best to do it. In fact, I got uh, uh, three different areas of good notes to preach from or teach from. I tried to go a different direction, but I just couldn't get away from it. I had to follow that indelible impression from on the inside of me. Praise God. That uh, the day services are prayer services, teaching on the subject of prayer, the subject is prayer, but the night service, the subject is the Holy Spirit. And in our Holy Spirit meetings, there's a text that we always use, and I want to read it here again, and that's in 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, and the fifth verse that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. 
that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. In other words, your faith should stand in the power of God. Now, Paul talks about writing to Timothy in the last days that people would have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof. To understand what he's talking about in this verse, you need to read also the fourth verse of this same opening. My speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. My speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit. Thank God for the demonstration of the Spirit. Amen. Now, you'll find that the Holy Spirit demonstrates himself in the physical and he also demonstrates himself in the spiritual. Amen. You know, uh, through the years, there's come different revivals. And revival is just simply a renewal of something that existed before. You can't revive something. In other words, if somebody died and, you know, just momentarily, and they, they revived them. Well, they were alive before. You can't revive something. So God sends a renewal of whatever we need. Now, there was a healing revival, 1947 through 1958 here in America, uh, because healing, you see, had waned more or less. And I went to church after church during 1944, 1945, and pastors would tell me, had anybody been healed in our church in years? And so I, I continued to teach and preach on healing a couple of times a week, a couple of times a week. But then there came the revival because we needed that. And then there came the charismatic revival because we needed revival. Praise God of the being filled with the Holy Ghost. And then there came the teaching revival because we were lacking in teaching. And uh, these things come, amen, but you see, you don't stay there. Come on, get on the next wave. <laughs> Some folks are still on the same wave they was on 10 years ago. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. And so we were lacking in the church as a whole when it comes to physical demonstrations. You know, people said, well, I'm satisfied with what I've got, but, you know, I want everything God's got for me. I don't know about you. And I don't know whether you know it or not, but there's a real blessing of dancing in the Spirit. You've heard my testimony. I was a young Baptist boy preacher, was baptized with the Holy Ghost, spoke to other tongues, April 1937. I mean, two years later, two years later, 1939, in fact, two years and several months later, almost three years later, my wife said to me, I believe you could preach standing in a wash pan. Now, you have to interpret things like that to this younger generation. They don't know. I mean, some of the ringer singers in band asked my wife, what's a wash pan? <laughs> well, we didn't always have wash basins and, you know, bathrooms, and we'd have a pitcher of water and a wash pan about 12 inches in diameter. You pour water in the pan, wash your hands. It's a wash pan. Yeah, I could preach. You know what I mean? I never moved from behind the pulpit. Amen. I just, you know. I could preach standing in a wash pan. She was exactly right about it. <laughs> Amen. Uh, but then I got baptized. I mean, that's after I was baptized with the Holy Ghost and spoke with other tongues. See, just because you're baptized in the Holy Ghost and spoke with other tongues don't mean you got everything God has for you. Doesn't mean that you're free as you ought to be. Now, because, see, I got the left foot of fellowship from the, the Baptists and came over among the Pentecostals. And I'm pastor of a... Pentecostal church in the black land of North Texas. Man, I mean, at the drop of the hat, there's all dancing. And I'd sit there on the platform and watch them and thought I knew they enjoyed it. I could tell by the expression on their face they were getting blessed. But you see, I said, well, if the Lord, if I ever dance, it'll be the Lord. But you know, that's stupid. Don't care if it was me, that's still stupid. <laughs> And that's not the only time I've been stupid. You understand that? <laughs> but no use you laughing at me. I just joined the crowd. 
Praise God. Amen. Yeah, if you ever see me dance, it'll be the Lord. But no, if you see me dance, it'll be the Lord dance. It'll not be the Lord dance, it'll be me. Amen. And so I went along. See, I got baptized Holy Ghost 1937. Now I'm talking about seven years later. I'm talking about 1944. I was holding a meeting in South Texas, and there's a little lady to get up to sing, one of their members, an older lady in her 70s, but she had the anointing. And everybody got blessed. Sometime right in the middle of the song, she'd just stop and start dancing. And so one night, she finished her song, stepped down off the platform, and began to dance. A few folks joined her, and I said to myself, well, here goes. Bless God, I'm going to get in on this. And I just jumped off of the platform. Now, I jumped in the flesh, but when I hit the floor, I'm in the spirit. I'll tell you, I danced so hard, they tell me my coattail stood straight out behind me. <laughs> Praise God. And you know what? I got blessed. I got blessed. I got a blessing I never had before. Glory to God. And so the next time the Spirit of God moved that way and folks began to dance, I just joined in with them. See, some folks, you know, they're waiting for God to make them do something. God don't make people do anything. If he did, he'd make everybody in the world get saved tonight. We'd all go in the millennium tomorrow. No, he'll lead you and guide you. Praise God. Well, we needed a revival in some of these areas of physical demonstration. On the day of Pentecost, they thought they was drunk. Now, there had to be more than speaking in tongues. You know, I hear people speak different languages sometimes, particularly more today. For If you get down in Florida, down there in Miami, <laughs> and you go to the mall, they don't tell them how many different languages you'll hear. Amen. But you don't think they're drunk. They must have been acting like drunk people. There's such a thing as dancing in the Spirit. There's such a thing as being drunk in the Spirit. I've been there. Glory to God. And, and, and you get blessed and thank God for it. I said, thank God for it. And the Bible said the hand of the Lord, and if you read from Ezekiel, he uses that term again and again, the hand of the Lord was upon me. The hand of the Lord was upon me. The hand of the Lord was strong upon me, he said. Amen. And then he, he says the Spirit. So the hand of the Lord is the Spirit. The Bible said the hand of the Lord was on Elijah and he outran the king's chariot. Amen. Fourteen miles across the plain of Jezreel. Amen. Then Jezebel said, I'm going to have your head took off by tomorrow. And he started running again, but he wasn't in the spirit this time. The hand of the Lord wasn't on him. So there's such a thing as running. Amen. In the spirit. The hand of the Lord. I know because I've been there. I've done that. I mean, even at my age. And I'll be 82 this year. Praise God, once in a while, the hand of the Lord come on, I'll take off running. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. And so, thank God for physical demonstration of the Spirit. Amen. But you know, that's not all there is to it. And if it's not careful, it's easy to get unbalanced. Amen. Amen. I don't know why the church on nearly any given subject gets, some of them at least do, get unbalanced. They either get in the ditch on this side or the ditch on the other side. Now, you can take any subject you want to take in the Bible, and you'll find extremes both ways. Now, on one side, when it comes to water baptism, there are people that don't believe in water baptism in more certain areas of Christian. Amen. But there are those that believe, bless God, being immersed. Amen. Amen. Put under. Amen. Water. Baptized. But then right on the other hand, there's people over here in the ditch on this side. Well, unless you're baptized in water, you're not really a Christian. You're not going to go to heaven. Well, I know that's not true. I know after I was healed and raised up from a deathbed, someone... I remember a preacher, he got to talking to me, you know, had I been baptized? And the way he baptized was in the name of Jesus. I hadn't been baptized at all. 
Now, if she was a little kid, I joined the church and was baptized in water, but that don't make you a Christian. I got born again on the bed of sickness. And since I've been born again, I haven't been baptized in water. You say, well, why? Well, I haven't found anybody I want to baptize me. I don't care about just being baptized by anybody. And so I hadn't found anybody. So then he proceeded to tell me I wouldn't go to heaven if I died because I hadn't been baptized according to his method in the name of Jesus only. Well, I said, I know better than that. I know that's not true because on the 8th day of August, 16th day of August, 1933, I died. I left my body and I went up to heaven. Glory to God. And I hadn't been baptized in water. And Jesus said, go back. Go back to the earth. You can't come yet. Your work on earth is not done. And so I descended and came back down in the room and slipped inside my body like a man would slip his foot inside of his boot in the morning time. And then I said to Mama, I'm not going to die now. She thought, man, I'm not going to die now this minute. I mean, I'm not going to die now. I'm going to live and do the work of God. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you see, there are extremes on that subject, on both sides of the fence, so to speak. Amen? You could just mention any Bible subject you want to. <laughs> and people get in the ditch on one side or the ditch on the other side. Now, you know, when it comes to demons, and it isn't anything new, a few years ago, every few years, another generation come along. I've been in the ministry 65 years. And every few years, this will crop up, you know. They did way back in the late 40s and early 50s. Everything's a devil. One, one preacher said he never saw another preacher didn't have a devil in him. There's a devil behind every bush. There's a devil under every bed. And everything that happens in the church, the devil did it. <laughs> and everything's the devil. And people see demons everywhere. Well, the Lord used me and dealt with me about casting out devils. And I had to minister along that line, but I didn't want to be clashed with all of these fanatics that got in the ditch on the other side, you see. And so I backed off from obeying God and got in trouble. And the Lord said, you go ahead and do what I told you to do. You know, and they had all kinds of things. They had, uh, for instance, we, my wife and I were in uh, Pennsylvania in a, just a, a, a faith seminar. We were teaching faith morning and night. And a lady came. Now, we're just teaching. It's a seminar. See, we're not ministering. It's not an evangelistic service. Thank God for all kinds of services. And so this lady came. We, we noticed that she held a Kleenex over her mouth. And she said, Brother Hagin, Mrs. Hagin said, w would you all pray for me? Now, see, we weren't having any laying on a hand service. And we said, well, sure, yeah, yeah. Come. And so we took her in a side room because the service is over and people standing around talking. I don't like to pray and try to pray and everybody around you blabbing and going on. We need to be reverent towards the things of God. Amen. Amen. And so we took her in this side room. And she said, I attended. And she went, went to a certain meeting, you know, where they were. We're casting out devils. And she said, they said to me, you've got a devil. Now cough it up. She said, I started coughing, and this white foam started running out of my mouth and never did stop. She said, every night I use a whole box of Kleenex, that white foam, and then they couldn't help me. Can you help me? I said, yeah, I can do it. But I said, I'm not going to do it unless you, you promise you one thing. You'll never go to one of those kind of meetings again. She said, don't worry about that. <laughs> I, I ain't going. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, we are sitting down. She's sitting in a chair. My wife's sitting there beside. I'm sitting across from her. And I just simply said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command this foul spirit to leave this woman's body. You understand that spirit's not in her spirit? A Christian couldn't have a demon on the in, in their spirit. But he'll get into their mind a lot of times, and sometimes he'll get into their body. Amen? But you couldn't be demon-possessed. 
That, that would mean both spirit, soul, and body. But naturally, you get into the body. And, and immediately, you can ask my wife. I mean, as fast as you can snap your finger, that white foam stopped. Immediately. 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 Well, you know, I don't know whether you know it or not, but I'll tell you in case you don't. You need to be careful what kind of meetings you get in on. You don't need just to run around and go anywhere. Too many times, I think a lot of charismatic Christians, charismatic Christians, are a lot sort of like young birds. You know, just been hatched out. Now, in our home, there's a there's a a column just outside the living room or, or the front door uh, entranceway, and there's a ledge up here because see that the, the house is out of rock, you know, and so the the caretakers, you know, they saw the yard men or saw this nest there, and got up and looked in it and saw that there's four or five eggs in it. So they just left it there. Well, I'd see the old mother, you know, bird coming and going, but eventually they hatched out, and you could hear them a peeping. I, I climbed up there myself where I could, just got a little bit, looked at them, you know. They heard me and thought it was their mama. <laughs> there they were with their eyes shut and their mouth wide open. <laughs> They're waiting for mama to put something in it. I think too many Christians are sitting around with their eyes shut and their mouth wide open, and people come along, just poke anything in the world down. Just poke anything in the world. And they don't know the difference and run off and say, isn't that wonderful, isn't that wonderful? <laughs> Amen. Amen. I was in a meeting in another state. Nobody in Oklahoma would be that stupid. <laughs> but I was in a meeting in another state, and a lady came to me and said, Brother Hagin, my 14-year-old son, God's called him to the preach and called him to the ministry, and she said, prophet so-and-so. Well, thank God there is a legitimate ministry of the prophet, but right on the other hand, on that subject, we get in the ditch on one side. On one side, people said, well, there's not prophets today. All that's been done away with, you know. That ceased with the apostles. But then on the other hand, there are folks that get in the ditch on the other side. And so this prophet, so-and-so, I'd never heard of him, but so-and-so prophesied over her son. And it was recorded on tape, you know, and then typed up. Would you read it? Well, the Bible tells us to judge prophets. You don't just accept something. I tell people all the time, I told them for years, you don't accept it. Just because I said it, don't accept it. The Bible teaches it should be judged. Because, see, we're human. We can miss it. So, well, the Holy Ghost don't miss it. No, but he's operating in human channels, imperfect channels. And so she brought the prophecy, and I read it. Now, here's a part of it. I didn't have to read all of it. <laughs> I got enough right off the start. God's called this young man to the ministry. He'll be greater than all of the 12 apostles put together. He'll have all the nine gifts of the Spirit operating in him. I stopped right there, and she said, what do you think about it? I said, it's baloney, <laughs> capital B. It's bunk. She got mad about it. Yeah, this is my son, and that's prophet so-and-so. I said, who said he's a prophet? said, he did. I said, if you got to go around telling people you're a prophet, you ain't. I said, you ain't. A-I-N-T. If you are a prophet, sooner or later, they'll find it out. And again, if they don't find it out, you ain't. Amen. And so it's so easy to get in the ditch on one side or the ditch on the other side. Amen. You see it happening all the time. Let's stay up in the middle of the road. Praise God forevermore. Can you say amen? amen. Thank God for prosperity. I believe in prosperity, but did you know you can get in the ditch on that, either one side or the other side? Amen. And I'm fearful today that they, they're getting in the ditch over here on the wrong side. 
Now, for a long time, we were on the ditch over here on this side. I was myself. Didn't know any better. You know, you don't know any more than what you've been taught. Amen? You know, and as Baptist, I started out as a young Baptist boy preacher. And I got baptized the Holy Ghost. I was pastor of a country church. Now, if they prayed for the pastor, they prayed, Lord, you keep him humble and we'll keep him poor. <laughs> but when you got over to Pentecostals, they doubled up on it. They said, Lord, you keep him humble and we'll keep him doubly poor. And you ought not to have anything. And preachers would say, I don't want any of this world's goods. Well, the Bible said Satan is the God of this world, but it didn't belong to him. Amen. I said, amen. amen. The Bible said the world and the fullness are of the Lord's. The 50th Psalm. The Bible said the cattle of a thousand hills are the Lord's. The Bible said the silver and the gold is the Lord's. Same. But see, we got in the ditch over here on this side. I don't want any of this world's goods. And thought we were being humble. Lived on Barely Get Along Street. Way down at the end of the block, right next to Grumble Alley. <laughs> in fact, in the 50s, one preacher told me, because another preacher drove a 36 Chevrolet, he is humble. I think he's stupid. <laughs> Amen. But thank God, some of us began to get a hold of truth. And we got up in the middle of the road and begin to enjoy the blessings of God. But right on the other hand, it's so easy to get in the ditch. Everybody say ditch. ditch. On the other side, instead of staying up in the middle of the road, to get in the ditch over on the other side. Amen? Now, you see, it's so easy just to accept things because somebody said it, because it sounds good, because everybody's doing it. And not, I, I'm not any different than you. I did the same thing, but thank God the Lord corrected me. Now, for instance, because some of you folks, some of you rainbow graduates, I mean, in time past, years ago, back in the 80s, you heard me say that. When we'd take up an offer, I'd pray a hundredfold blessing on people. That it would return to them a hundredfold. But I was getting ready to come to school one morning, and some of you rainbow graduates may remember I told you. I got one sock on, one sock off. I'm holding the other sock in my hand. And the Lord said to me, no one has ever got a hundredfold return on all of their giving. Well, that shocked me. I've been praying God would restore to them a hundredfold. He said, no one has ever received a hundredfold return on all of their giving. Now, he said, someone might give a dollar and somebody might have given them a hundred dollars. But how much did you give last year, you and your wife? How much did you give in tithes and offerings last year? Well, I said 30, I think it's about $37,000. He said, well, how much is 100 fold, 100 times 37,000? <laughs> well, it went up there, isn't it? What is it, about 3,700,000, something like that? Now, how much are you going to give this year? See, the year was nearly over, and we're going to top this year. What would I said about forty-two or forty-three thousand dollars? Well, how much is a hundred times forty-three? Well, that's another four four million three hundred thousand. Add that to three million seven hundred thousand, and you got about eight hundred thousand. You got about eight million dollars you ought to have. How much are you planning on giving next year? Well, we're going to top what we did this year. We're going on up to 45. Hallelujah. Well, that'd be another 4,500,000. That'd be 12 million if you put all just the three years' time. Would be 12 million and something. No one has ever got a hundredfold return on all of their giving. Can you see that? I said, can you see that? See, folks get in the day. You can't promise people that they're going to have a hundredfold return on it. I haven't got a hundredfold return on what you give. Now, by obeying God, by giving tithe, paying my tithes, and giving offerings, this past year, see, now that was back in the 80s I'm talking about. We're giving 
37,000, 42,000, 45,000 a year. This, this year, this year, 98 now. See, we've got to give in. This year, my wife and I, in paying tithes and giving offering, gave $202,000. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. hallelujah. No, just keep on paying your tithes and giving offerings. Now, while I'm on the subject, I might as well sweep it up. Yes. Amen. 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 You don't pay tithes and give offerings like they did in the old covenant. You do it like Abraham did it. God incorporated it under the Levitical law, but we don't give tithes and pay offering like they did under the Levitical law. Now then, for instance, you know, they, 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 the Bible talks about them bringing their first fruits to the priest. Not one single thing said in the New Testament about first fruits in connection with finances. We receive the first fruit of the Spirit. First fruits is mentioned seven times in the New Testament. First fruits, first fruit three times. But it has reference to Jesus as the first fruits from the dead. The first fruits, first person ever born again. Are oh, you listening to me? No, you see, under the new covenant, we've got one high priest, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. But all of us, we're made kings and priests unto God. Every one of us are a priest. Well, you pay your tithe. You give me your offering. No, 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 no. There are no, there are no priests on the earth. Well, somebody said, what about the fivefold minister? Aren't they priests? No, they're not priests. See, you, they couldn't get to God except going through the priest. But bless God, we don't have to go through anybody. That's a revelation, you see, praise God, that Martin Luther got. You don't have to go through a priest. You don't have to go through anybody except Jesus. We are made priest and king. Ye are a royal priesthood, Paul said. Every believer is a royal priest. Glory to God. He don't have to somebody else go to God for him. Somebody said, well, don't the fivefold ministry represent you? No, they represent God to you. They don't represent you. Don't shout me down now because I'm preaching real good. It's so easy to get in the ditch on this side or the ditch on the other. I didn't mean to get off on that, but I did anyway, didn't I? <laughs> the ditch on the other side. Let's stay up in the middle of the road, praise God. The principle, the action is not the same, but the principle is the same. And we pay tithes not as a law, but under grace. Now again, on preaching on tithes, I came over. Now, we believed in tithes in the Baptist church. We preached tithes. Came over to Pentecostals, they believed. But they'd make it a law. I mean, if you don't pay tithes, you're going to hell. No, you're not. I said, no, you're not. It's a grace. We're living under grace and not law. You're just going to miss out on some blessings of God. You're just going to come up short of God's blessings. Amen? But they'd make it a law. I mean, you pay tithes or else. No, bless God, it's a principle. Hallelujah. And so we teach it for folks to get blessed, and they get blessed, and I got blessed, and I'm being blessed. Praise God forevermore. But I said all that to you to show you how easy it is to get in the ditch on one side and on the other side. Now, let me get out of what I'm going to talk about. That's all my introduction. Won't charge anything for it. It's all free. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, it's so easy if you're not careful to get taken up with physical demonstration of the Spirit, and that's all you want to do. But there are spiritual demonstrations of the Spirit to balance us out. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Paul said in the 12th chapter of 1 Corinthians, but in the 7th verse, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit to another discerning of spirits, to another amplified cause it special faith because we already have saving faith and general faith and Bible faith, to another working of miracles, to another gifts of healings, to another prophecy, 
to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. Now notice the 11th verse. But all of these worketh. That's the way the Holy Ghost works. Now I'm going to say something may shock you, but it's true nonetheless. If all you have is physical demonstrations of the Spirit, and if we're not careful, we're getting out of balance here then you don't have a full demonstration of the Spirit. I don't know about you, but I want it all, don't you? Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. 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 For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another discerning of Spirit. We divide them into three groups because there are three of them that reveal something, three of them that do something, and three of them that say something. Thank God for spiritual manifestations of the Holy Ghost. And, of course, when they're manifested then, they become demonstrations of the Spirit. Praise His holy name forevermore. Amen. I remember I was, uh, held, I held a meeting in Omaha, Nebraska, in the first Foursquare Church a number of years ago. And then our next meeting was in Salem, Oregon. My wife and I had a 26-foot travel trailer at the time that we traveled in. And so uh, rather than make such a long trip from Omaha back up through the Rockies and over into Oregon, I, uh, a young man had asked me to stop by and preach for him. And so I said, well, we'll just make a stop over here. Now, sometimes the Lord specially leads you, but then sometimes you just have to use your own brain if you got one. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? I, I tell the folks all the time, unless the Lord led you, go south in the winter instead of north. <laughs> Some of them, now, any, any, any of you graduates remember me saying that? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, just use your noggin. You know what your noggin is, don't you? That's this bump here. Amen. But now if the Lord told you to go in the winter, go ahead. But you better be sure he told you because you may wind up in trouble. You ought to have enough sense. So I had enough sense. I wasn't particularly led, but just stop over here. So we stopped over in Tribune, Kansas. Tribune, just a little town in western Kansas. Just for 10 days, then went on on a trip, see. Now, we were specially led to go to Salem, Oregon. We didn't have any special leading here. But we did it, and God blessed us. Well, I've learned that, now this is a little Assembly of God church where I was preaching, but I learned that there was a, another little full gospel church in town. See, it's a small town, you know, independent Pentecostal church. Well, they had heard of me in my ministry. In fact, I, I didn't realize it, but she had gotten, his wife had gotten baptized with the Holy Ghost under my ministry when I held a meeting in Topeka, Kansas. And he wasn't saved, but he got saved. Now, later on, he got baptized in the Holy Ghost. God called him to preach. And there they are, pastoring this church. So they just dismissed all of their services over that 10-day period, except their Sunday morning service. Every night they were over in this meeting. Well, we closed out on Wednesday night. And then we were going to travel Thursday, Friday, and arrive on Saturday in Salem, Oregon. And so she came to me. We were, the service all over, and we were standing down here around the front talking. And she came and said, Brother Hagin, may I speak to you? And I said, surely. She said, well, this is sort of private. Said, you know, people all around, she didn't want them to hear. And so we stepped over beside the piano. And she said, when I first got saved, now, you know how the Holy Ghost moves? Thank God. Sometimes he'll tell you ahead of time. Like I said, I saw in the Spirit three or four months ago myself teaching here in the day service. Once in a while, that'll happen. Once in a while. Not often. No, suddenly, the day of Pentecost was fully come. They were in one accord in one place. Suddenly came a sound from heaven like a rushing mighty wind and filled all the house. Suddenly. Well, this lady just said, when I first got saved, suddenly the Spirit of God moved on me. And I knew exactly. I knew exactly. Word of knowledge, you see, Amanda. I knew exactly what her problem was. I said to her, wait, wait, sister, stop. Stop right now. Stop. Don't say another word. 
Now, you could go ahead and tell me what your problem is. What happened when you first got saved? You could tell me that. And according to the Bible. See, I, I, I've got a book here that has all the answers in it. Now, it, it might not be the answer you want, but it's God's answer. Now, remember where I was. I'm, I'm, I'll come back to where I was. I'm going to take a little side journey here. I remember years ago, to be more explicit about it, 19 and, well, so-and-so. I'll not go into it. But anyway, one of my own relatives died. A little while after, Jesus appeared to me in a vision. Now, he's talking to me about the ministry and, and two or three different things that I was praying about, finished this conversation and said, be faithful, fulfill your ministry, for the time is short, and turned and walked away. He walked three or four steps, and I said, dear Lord Jesus, may I ask you something? And he turned around and retraced his steps, came right back to me, and said, surely. Well, now, you know, after an experience like that, as we say a lot of times, speaking naturally, you really don't think of a thousand things, but you do think of many things. A lot of times we just use that and express a thousand things. But you see, at a time like that, you don't think of it because it's not a mental experience. It's a spiritual experience. And so whatever is on your heart, that's the thing. Well, this was on my heart. Oh, why did this relative not receive healing? See? So I said to him, I asked him if I may ask. He said, yes, surely. And I said, uh, why didn't so-and-so get healed. Now, here's his answer. He said, Did, didn't you ever read in my word? He'll always take you to the word. Didn't you ever read in my word where it says, the secret thing belongeth unto the Lord? I said, yeah, yeah. Now, that's only half of the verse. That's Deuteron I said, that's Deuteronomy 29, 29. The secret thing belongs to the Lord, but that which is revealed belongs to us and our children forever. Now, he said, why so-and-so didn't get healed is a secret between me and them. If I'd have wanted you to know, I'd have told you. Now, that's plain enough, isn't it? That wasn't the answer I was looking for, but it's the answer to it. It's the answer. It is the answer. That's a secret between me and them. If I'd wanted you to know, I'd have told you. And then he said, because, you know, I mean, I mean, you, you lose a loved one, you know, early in life. Well, after all, God's promised us long life. If you let it, it'll shake you up. Jesus said to me personally, I mean, I saw him just as plain as I see Tony Cook sitting there, except he's standing right in front of him. He said, you go right on preaching faith and healing just like you've been preaching it. See, it doesn't change the word. Whether it's my relative or your relatives or who relatives was that didn't get healed, it doesn't change the word. Go right on preaching faith and healing just like you've been preaching it. And don't touch that in thought life again. In other words, don't even think again, why didn't they get healed? Well, I'm not perfect. Are you? I'm glad you didn't lift your hand. We'd have to start praying for liars immediately. But I'll tell you one thing about it. I've been perfect on that score. I've never thought about it again. Never touched it in thought life again. Never touched it in thought life again. Just let, leave it there. Leave it alone. If he'd wanted me to know, he'd have told me. Now, where was it before I got off on the little side journey there? What was that? Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to see. Sometimes these young folks can't remember like some of the older folks. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Now, I said to this lady, you see, you could have told me your problem, and I could have given you an answer because I know the Word and I have the Spirit. But now, if I supernaturally, thank God for the supernatural. We need the supernatural demonstration, the supernatural manifestation of the Spirit of God. Amen. Amen. If I could tell you supernaturally your problem and answer it, you know then that God is concerned about you. You know he's interested in you. You know he loves you. Yeah, yes, he said, that's right. I said, well, all right. Now, listen, listen to me. 
And if I miss it, just speak up and say you missed it. Now, somebody said, wouldn't that bother you? Well, no, no, I just joined the rest of you. <laughs> Amen. I said, when you first got saved, about six months after you had gotten saved, you told a lie. And the devil has harassed you ever since then and told you that you've committed an unpardonable sin. And then, now she's standing right there in front of me, just as close to me as I am but the Dr. Honeyager is. See, except she's standing right here. And my eyes are wide open. But instead of seeing her, I saw, and I, I didn't know where the church was. I didn't know where their postage was. But I suddenly saw their postage. I began to describe it to her. And I said in the front bedroom, you'll get so depressed over this that you'll go into this front bedroom and shut, draw the blinds. The light gives you a sphere. You'll stay sometimes a week at the time in that room. And one time you shut yourself up for three weeks. She said, oh, you must be a fortune teller or a mind reader. No, I said, I'm not telling you fortune or reading your mind either one. I didn't get that out of my mind. I got it out of my spirit. Amen. She said, well, that's exactly what happened. Thank God. I said, now, here's what the Holy Ghost is saying and gave her the answer. Praise God for the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Say it out loud. Praise God for the Holy Ghost. Say it again. Praise God for the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God for the revelation gifts, which are the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and discerning of spirits. We left our last church that we pastored in 1949, February of 1949. October of that same year, 1949, we were holding a meeting in a church that we'd formerly pastored some five or six years before. And I always, in every meeting, would have a healing service Tuesday and Friday night. So we were ministering to the sick. And this young man came up in the healing line. I recognized him because he was brought up in that church. He was in the church as a youngster. When I left, he's about 13 years old, but he'd been in the church all his life. So I'm standing down off the platform, and folks are lined up, and I take them one by one and deal with them. So when he stepped up in place, I knew who he was, of course, and he's a member of this church, saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking with other tongues. And I asked him, what did he come for? He said, Brother Hagin, last year, I, I graduated from high school. Now, this is October, but last May, I graduated from high school at 18 years of age. Now, since then, I've passed my 19th birthday. I'm 19 now. But last year, my senior year of high school, I began to have epileptic seizures. And he said, after graduating high school, I tried to join the armed forces, but they wouldn't take me because of epilepsy. So he'd come to be healed of epilepsy. Well, I said, isn't it wonderful that you and I have inside information? I mean information inside the Word of God, the Bible, that healing belongs to us. Yeah, he knew that. He was raised up. He, amen in Pentecost and full gospel. So I laid hands on him. Now, when I laid hands on him, I can't tell you, I don't know everything. But sometimes the Word of knowledge won't operate until you touch people. When you touch people, then you know then I knew that this was a spirit. Now, you have to understand this, that there's some diseases and sicknesses that are caused by the presence, personally present in the body of a spirit. But then there are others that are just natural causes. For instance, you eat something, doesn't agree with you. But thank God there's healing and deliverance in either case. Amen? Amen. Praise God. And so I perceive, I knew actually knew that his body is oppressed by this spirit, and I've got to cast the spirit out of him. Now, when I say out of him, what do I mean? Out of his body. But then I know this, because I saw it happen with other ministers. You just go ahead and do that and don't explain to people 
And the devil can use it to their disadvantage. Because, you see, you just cast that spirit out of him. Then people sitting back in the congregation say, well, he's saved, speaks with tongues, member of this church. If he's got a devil, maybe I got one. And they're going to wind up then when the devil accommodate him. So I stopped and said to them, I won't let me explain to you. I'm going to cast this spirit out of his body, not out of him as a spiritual person. Now, for instance, I said, you may live here on a certain street, certain block. Somebody said, that's an old house. You know that old house? Been there for nearly 100 years. That old house has got termites in it. Well, does that mean you got termites in you? No. The body is the house you live in. And this house that you live in, you contact this world where Satan is God and where demons are rampant. And if you don't know how to take authority, they can get in very often. Oh, you're listening to me. So I cast that out of him. Now, a year later, 12 months later, I went up there to preach just a Saturday night service. Well, about the time I started to leave, I got a long distance telephone call, so I got tied up. And then, when you're in a hurry, and Saturday night, and you're in a real big hurry, it seemed like there's more traffic than ever. And I was late getting there. And so I came in a side door through into the church. And when I came in, the pastor said, well, we've been waiting on Brother Hagin, and, uh, and we've waited because I wanted to wait till he got here. I'm going to take up an offering for him. And we'll just have the ladies' trio is going to sing a song to sing this special while we're receiving the offering. Well, I apologize for being late and told them why. And I'm sitting there looking the congregation over, and my eyes fell on this young man. And the Lord said to me, I mean, just as real as somebody standing or sitting behind me, you look back, there ain't nobody back there, said, that young man in the last two weeks has had three seizures. Now, for a solid year, 12 months, he had never had one single seizure. But in the last two weeks, he's had three seizures. He woke up in the nighttime. In other words, now before, he never had a seizure in the nighttime, in his sleep, always in the daytime. But he woke up out of sleep in this seizure. And the reason that he did is because he went to bed and went to sleep afraid. You've got to realize, friends, thank God for the Holy Ghost. We need all the manifestations of the Spirit. Amen? Because, you see, sometimes, particularly in the church, now people out here in evangelists, he only deals with one side of healing. Or in my healing meetings, I only dealt with one side of healing. But there's more than one side. Paul said right to the church at Corinth, For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. That is, their body was asleep in the grave. Their spirit going to be with the Lord. But now that, that he infers that they shouldn't be weak, and they shouldn't be sleepy, and they shouldn't have died. But there was a cause. Why? And so many times in ministering to folk, if you're going to get them healed, you, you've got to deal with the cause. And so here he gave me the cause. Why did this come back on the man? Well, Dad Nelson, P.C. Nelson, said more people lose their healing over a counterattack than anything else. The devil always comes back. But so he said to me, now when you get up there, deal with it. So the ladies got through singing about that time, and I took the pulpit over, and I called this young man up to the front. In fact, I stepped down off the platform, standing there with him. I said, young man, when I was here last year, you were healed. I cast that spirit out of you, and you were healed of epilepsy. And for 12 months, one solid year, you never had a seizure. He said, yeah, but. I said, wait just a minute. Let me tell you. If I miss it, just speak up and say you missed it. I said, in the last two weeks, you've had three seizures. And they came on you in the nighttime. You woke up before you never had one in the nighttime. Now, here's a young man who's raised up in Pentecostal church, and he said, you must be a mind reader or a fortune teller. 
That's exactly what happened. No, I said, I'm not reading your mind or telling you. Isn't that strange that people who believe fortune tellers and mind readers could tell you something, but poor God couldn't. <laughs> Amen. No, thank God for the Holy Ghost. Now, why am I talking like that? We need spiritual demonstrations as well as physical demonstrations. We need to balance out on it. Yes. Amen. Yes. Now, why did we begin to have so many physical demonstrations that we used to didn't have it? Because we preached it. Because we kept preaching it. Now, why are we going to have spiritual demonstrations more and more? Because we preach it. Because we're going to keep preaching it. And because we believe God. Hallelujah. 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 So I said to him, just let me tell you, and if I miss it, just, just speak up and say, you missed it. Now I said, do you know why you had these seizures that come back? No, he said, I don't. I said, the Lord told me that you went to bed and went to sleep afraid. He said, Brother Hagin, that's right. He said, now, that fear. See, a fear would come back and try to get a hold of him, that he'd have another seizure. And he said, before I dealt with it, before I went to sleep. But on these occasions, I didn't get rid of it before I went to sleep. I said, you see, he's not given us a spirit of fear, the Bible said. Now, notice he calls fear a spirit. But he's given us a spirit of power. Hallelujah. Love and a sound mind. Hallelujah. I said, now, for instance, if in the natural, your, your, your literal physical house you live in on such and such a street, if you left the back door open, went off and went to bed, no telling who and what would get in. Skunk might get in. Coon might get in. Stray dog might get in. Burglar might come in. Not only would it cost you some goods, it might cost you your life. You happen to wake up, they're liable to kill you. Because it's the will of God? No, because you left the door open. See, when you get into fear, you leave the door open. Then you're going to have to shut the door. Now, I said, I'm going to cast that thing out of you again. And I did. Now, I said, I'm going to stand right here and teach you how to resist the devil. I spent 45 minutes teaching him. And that's the lesson for the whole crowd. Well, years later, I mean, when the young man is over, I guess, 63 years of age, checked up on him, never had another seizure, never had another one. Now, you understand this? In dealing with epileptics, you don't always deal with the devil directly. I've had any number of epileptics healed, as many as three and four in one meeting, in one week. But only a few times did I have to deal with the devil. See, it can be strictly a physical condition, or it can be because of the presence of a spirit. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank God. Say it again out loud. Thank God, Thank God. For, the for the Holy Ghost. Thank God, Thank God. For, the for the gifts of the Spirit. Thank God. For a manifestation of his power, of his glory, of his presence, of his gifts. Hallelujah. Now, the early church prayed, Grant that thy servants, fourth chapter of Acts, shall be enabled to speak thy word with boldness by stretching forth your hand to heal and the signs and wonders. Well, that means, bless God, miracles, working of miracles. Be wrought in the name of thy holy child, Jesus. If it's all right for them to pray that way, it's all right for us to pray that way. I want you to stand to your feet right now. Hallelujah. Praise God. And I want us to pray with our understanding right along the line that they did. And then I want us to switch over and pray with our spirits. Hallelujah, every single one of you. Heavenly Father, thank you for the privilege of prayer. Thank you for the Word of God. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the manifestation of the Holy Ghost. Thank you. Grant that thy servants everywhere, the servants of God, the ministers that are in this room, 
and thy ministers everywhere, true ministers of the gospel, shall be enabled to speak thy word with all boldness by stretching forth your hand to heal, that signs and wonders will be wrought in the name of thy holy child Jesus, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for the gifts of the Spirit, the revelation gifts, the power gifts, the vocal gifts. But especially we pray that there will be a greater manifestation of special faith, of working of miracles, of gifts of healings, greater manifestation than what we have seen heretofore. And we sense in our spirit that we are right on the verge of a great outbreak. Glory to God. So we continue to pray. And anything else, we prayed with our understanding as best we know how. Anything else that needs to be prayed or said in this connection or in any other area, we trust the Holy Ghost who indwells us to give us utterance that we may pray, that we may say whatever the Spirit of God wills. Lifre brafre pefi itja na mahyat. Bele froto stom brafre befi itja tapa. Me 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 hinkan kana na mahanga ha. Ala jantohra duhuna na matashtama. Me 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 ambra dimihi. Babala chite. Babala chite. Babala chite. Lishton retech na fre pefi in shukote. In skatoke. In skatoke. In skatoke. Leshkana fre pefi itja dafa. Listoratura dea, lichiti, 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 Mamra della Framefi, Mamra della Coteki, 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 Prake, Lenskana Framevi in Skana Kapaha, Fela Hicho, Fela Hicho. Fella hicho pra. Ha 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 ha. Samro te hi ich. Samro te le he ich. Samro te le he ich. Shavra maha o kunsti. Brafra pef. Surotola krete ken shika. Mamra dana nan siya. Mamra dana nan siya. Mamra dala nan siya. Mamra dala nan siya prote. Mamra Dala Loncia Prate, Prote Prate, Fraluti Frapato, La Creting in a Sukora Dala Vramevi Ege, Eve Ege, Eve Ege Ba, Eve Ege Balo, Eve Ege Balo Ma, Eve Ege Balo Ma, Eve Ege Balo Mana, Lestano Rehe Jeet, Lestala Horo no Lola Jeet. La jono lo holo la jit, la stono no holo lola bra jit, blanch tana frefe e zu, la stono horenen skinny hinkinki, nis gangara hanga, is gangara na mahanga da bragiri, mama la hora tapra papa ha ara sunto, ha 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 Shambrode, Shambrade D, Shambrade D bro, Shambrade D bro day, Shambrade D bro day de bidi, 
Sifra Frefe is just on Kontana Mahankat. And Skanganga Hanga. And Skanganga Hanga. And Skanganga Hanga. And Skanganga Hanga. Panganda. Pengona. Pingina. Pongoni. Baluke. Aloche. Elefe. Esamote. Esamote Eme. Esamote Eme. Ha 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 ha. Ela harana hans kan kan kan, mama mahanda ha 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 Esso mata mali, esso mata la mali, esso mata la mani, esso mata la mani, esso mata la mani, esso mata la mani. Palahini, 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 palahuri egedi. Kela do kuratin ga tu, kela huri digan skenga da bragu, en shafra fehezu. Fa pa pa le e ci tora te ci ne fra pe fe e ci di e ci di bo e ci di bo la e ci di bo la ma e ci di bo la ma la la fra ma fra fe zu e sa fra fe zu con con cane ne menga ga me 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 le hen ci co da ha me 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 le hen ci co ho ta me 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 in ci co ho ta me me in ci co ho ta pa. Ha 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 Paketea, Paketea Maya, Paketea Maya, Paketea Maya, Paketea Maya, Paketea Maya Ne, Paketea Maya Ne Kute, and Surate Ejunohre, Sifrefe, and it shall come to pass, and there shall be glory at last, much cause for rejoicing. Ha 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 ha, praise and worship, praise and worship. Hand in hand brings the glory at hand. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your divine presence. Thank you for your divine presence. Thank you for your divine presence. Ha 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 ha. Samahurake. Samarodake palihinehi. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise and worship. I heard the Spirit say, Praise and worship. Praise and worship at hand brings the glory to hand. The glory is the divine power of God, the divine presence of God. Hallelujah. You may be seated a moment. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want every person in this room that has a headache or while we're at it, pain or hurting in any place in your body to stand up. Stand up. Amen. Now, if it's your head, put your hand on your head. If it's your body, just put your hand on your body. If it's further down your limbs, well, put your hand down on your thigh. Praise God. Now repeat these words after me because you can heal yourself. Repeat these words after me. Let your heart agree with it. Thank you, Father, for your holy word. It is written, himself took our infirmities and bear our sicknesses. If he took our infirmities 
if he bare our sicknesses, then he took my infirmity. He bare my sickness. According to the Word of God, I'm healed. Satan, take your hand off of my body. Body, be healed. Now. Now put your other hand up and thank him for it. Put your other hand up and thank him for it. Put your other hand up and thank him for it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Now, now you may be seated. You, you that are standing may be seated. Praise God for his holy word. Praise God for his holy word. Hallelujah. I left my last church, last church that is that I pastored, in 1949. February of 1949, I preached my farewell sermon on the first Sunday of February 1949. I came up to close to Dallas in a place called Saxe, held a meeting for brother and sister Tipton. Lynette was just a small child at that time. If I'd have known she's going to be my daughter-in-law, eventually I'd have asked him to do a better job on raising her. <laughs> I'm just joking. They did an excellent job. But one night, you know, the service is in progress. You know, the preliminaries are singing. on. I'm sitting over, not on the platform, but one side. And suddenly, that's the way the Holy Ghost moves. Never had happened to me before in my life. But suddenly, my right side just... just I, th I thought it was physically hurting. It felt like, and, and I said to the Lord, Lord, what is that? I, I'm not really physically hurting, but I, the, the hurting's there. What is that? Now, the presbyter of an adjoining section, he and his wife had come over to the service, and the Lord said to me, that's that presbyter's wife, and it's her right ovary, and she's facing surgery. When you get up here, you, you, so I called her up there and ministered to her. She never did have that surgery. She got healed. Praise God forevermore. Thank you, Lord. Now then, I want to ask you this. How many of you folks that had a headache or you were hurting or you had pain or something in your body and now it's gone? Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. All over the building. Stand up. Stand up if that's your case. Stand up. Hallelujah. Well, say it out loud. Thank God, Thank God for the Word of God. The See, there's more than one way to receive healing. We make a mistake instead of following the Spirit of God by just doing it, you know, our way. But I heard the Spirit of God say, demonstrate. Hallelujah. Well, we saw a demonstration at work, didn't it? <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, I said that about the over. I never had that. That was 49. That's 50 years ago this month. This is February, isn't it? Was the last time I looked at the calendar. 50 years ago. And in 50 years, I've never had another manifestation just like that. But it did now while I was praying in tongues. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. And the Lord said, because I began to feel that in my own body, by the Spirit, the right ovary in pain, hurting, right ovary. Maybe, I don't know, but maybe even face an operation. But if that's you, stand up right now. Any of you ladies, praise God forevermore. Healing belongs to you. I said healing belongs to you. Now come right down here. Come right down here. Praise God. If you're in the balcony, come on down. We'll wait till you get here. Thank you, God. Amen. Now, say it out loud. Jesus, Jesus. Is, the healer. is the healer. Everybody stand up. Everybody stand up. Say it out loud again. Jesus, Jesus. Is, the healer. is the healer. One way. One way. Not, the way. Not the only way. But one way, one way. that Jesus heals is through the laying on of hands. I believe that Jesus heals today through the laying on of hands. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now, 
listen to me real carefully while we're at it. When the Spirit of God's moving a certain direction, whether or not it exactly fits you or not, if you're just close, get in on it. I was preaching in August of 1950 down in East Texas, out in the country, country church. Just as I finished my sermon, when I, now the building's full, August 1950. And there's light outside and double door, doors and windows are open because the building's not air conditioned. And you could just see a sea of men's faces out there. Couldn't get in because the building's full. And the word of the Lord came unto me saying, there's a man standing outside watching you through those doors. That's a sinner man. And he has a double hernia or rupture. Tell him to come in here and you lay hands on him and both of them will disappear instantly. Well, they tell me that he threw the cigarette down and came in. And I asked, Anyone know this man? They'll everybody knew him. Come to find out later, he's a leading citizen of the county. The pastor said, yeah, yeah, I know him. Well, I said, does anybody know that he has this double hernia rupture? Several lifted out. I said, I want three men to come. The Bible said to my three or four women. Examine him. See if you can find him. They did. I said, I'm going to curse him. They're going to disappear. And then I said, now, now take him to the aside where you can remove his clothing, you three men, come back and tell us. They came back and said, they disappeared, they're gone. Now, all the Lord said was, there's a sinner man watching you who has a double hernia, a rupture. But three men, saved men, Christian men inside the church that had not necessarily a double, but a rupture or hernia came. Well, I never asked them to come. But see, the Holy Ghost is moving that way. And two out of the three of them got healed. Disappeared instantly. Glory to God. Because they got in the flow. So the Lord specified, and here he specified right over it, but if you have a problem with the left over it, or while you're at it, you have any kind of female problems, get on down here. This is your night. Now, not because I told you, but because you believe it, say it out loud. This is my night. I receive, I receive my healing. My healing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My healing will spring forth speedily. Praise God. Now, I, I want Lynette and my wife to come. Yeah, and, and Sister uh, Tony Cook's wife. Amen. I want you ladies to lay hands on these ladies. Now, why are you doing that? Because the Lord told me to. You see, we make a mistake of wanting it done our way. We want to do it the Holy Ghost way. He said, I don't want to, me being a man, to lay hands on your stomach or on your side. But he said, have these ladies to lay ha their hands exactly on where the problem is. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. You ladies hear me now? Lay your hands exactly. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Brandy, Stukotevi, Enskinangri, Prakatosi, Pafadeya, Ebevina, Abaloka, Ergeinsu, Uridea. Ha, 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 ha. Believe it shall come to pass. The glory manifested at last. Ha, ha. For he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. Praise his holy name. Praise his holy name. Thanks be unto God, which giveth us the victory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Sing something. Praise God. Well, Thank you. it's so good to be here. Yes, 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 yes. It's so good it's so to good. be here. It's so good. By your stripes, I know.
to be healed. Now, there's a number of prayer cloths there. We're going to ask Craig to come lay hands on those cloths. We're going to believe God that the healing power of God will saturate them. When they're laid on the body of the sick, they'll flow into their body and saturate their body. The diseases depart from them. The evil spirits will go out of them. Hallelujah. The name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Your healing virtue and power is transmitted unto these bodies to these handkerchiefs, and as they're laid upon the bodies of the sick, that power will be transmitted unto the body and surcharge the body. The diseases will depart from them. The evil spirits will go out of them. And it'll be thus and so in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we'll give you praise, honor, and glory for it all. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We'll say it out loud. Jesus is the healer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As you go tonight, turn and shake hands with your neighbor and say, Jesus is the healer, and you're dismissed. <laughs> Amen. <laughs>